I'm going to call into order the April 27th, 2020 City Council work session. And tonight we have one item on the agenda, which is the 12 to 2040 work plan led by Aquila. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council and whoever's watching on Zoom tonight. Uh, so I, uh, my name is Aquila Hurd-Ravich. I'm the Community Development Director, and I am here to present our Tualatin 2040 work plan. Um, normally, uh, Steve Coper, Planning Manager, would join me, um, but if anybody overheard just now, he's um, wasn't able to join me tonight. Um, he's not feeling well, but I'm sure he'll be fine tomorrow. So I will do my best to to lead us through this. Um, so what we have accomplished, um, let me get my screens set up properly here. All right, so leading into tonight uh, was the last year, uh, the year of 2019, and uh, accomplishing the housing needs analysis and the economic opportunities analysis, and then culminating that with uh, policy priorities. So the next step after doing the analyses and the priorities is the work plan. And that's where we are tonight. So the, the work plan will um, span um, more like a fiscal year. So 2020 and 2021. And it really it consists of three main pieces, a comprehensive plan update, uh, development code update and community engagement along with those pieces. Um, so the comprehensive plan update will separate the comp plan from the development code. Uh, we'll, we wanna look at updating some graphics and the text to make it more user-friendly. And um, one of the more, uh, I guess, salient pieces um, will be updating a couple of the chapters to reflect our housing needs analysis. Uh, we do need to adopt a housing needs analysis. And so how we'll go about doing that is through an update to the comprehensive plan. Um, the companion piece to that is updating development code policies, or excuse me, development code regulations actually that reflect the uh, policies of the comprehensive plan. Um, and in order to do those things, we will we will uh, need community engagement. So, and I'll, I'll expand more on those things in a minute here. So I guess what I just wanted to touch on, um, what you have counsel in your packet and what's online, um, but what we're not showing. So if there's anybody who's kind of uh, new to this, you can follow along or look at these slides later in the PowerPoint in the council packet. But what we've accomplished to date is, is quite impressive. Um, over the years, we've done visioning and accomplished Tualatin tomorrow. Then we went through our code modernization project. And uh, then we set out to do our policy issue identification. And while we were doing the code update, we identified the need um, to do a housing needs analysis and an economic opportunities analysis. And then from that to identify some policies that could kind of take priority in terms of how we update our comprehensive plan and economic opportunities analysis, um, which would result in an update eventually to a, our economic strategic plan. But tonight we're, we're just focused on implementing um, the 2040 work plan um, as it relates to housing. Um, the economic piece will come later. So we, we also have this uh, really neat graphic that shows a timeline um, that basically shows these two tracks of a comprehensive plan kickoff and then leading into the development code kickoff. Um, and so that development code update would start more like 20, um, 2021, so January of 2021, um, as hopefully we're able to kind of wind up uh, some of the comprehensive plan work. So um, 
leading into the comprehensive plan update, um, what we intend to do with that, as I mentioned before, is separate that from the development code and then add uh, photos and graphics and make it um, more relevant to today and make it easier to use and read and understand. Um, as we've alluded to through many of these presentations, the co comprehensive plan has been updated in a piecemeal fashion over the years. So this would be one way to kind of at least bring the formatting together and maybe take out some of the just really outdated items. Um, we have some examples around the region to look to. One, one of my favorites is Hillsborough's comprehensive plan and um, the graphical nature that they used in, in their plan. So I'm not, I'm not saying that that's exactly what we'll do, but we would like to just make it more user-friendly and relevant and easier to relate to. Um, so besides just the uh, formatting piece, what we will need to do is update the comp plan policies around housing. And right now there's kind of two chapters that touch on it. It's uh, chapters four and five. And so we'll, we'll look to those to incorporate the policies that were identified in the housing needs analysis and the, the strategy that went along with that um, and add those to uh, the comprehensive plan. Um, and part of what we're looking to do is encourage a diversity of housing types in Tualatin. The timeline for that is a team creation and kickoff around now, um, spring, summer, 2020. We had originally looked at public outreach for summer and fall. Um, we're gonna regroup um, in the next week and think about what that means, think about what that looks like, how we go about doing public outreach. And um, I think we'll just need to not only identify new ways of doing public outreach, but just become more nimble so we can change as time, as need changes and as times change. And then the idea would be to um, conclude that work and start working on the actual writing, um, the drafting, and then leading into adoption of next next spring would is the is the goal. The companion piece to that is a development code update. And so the goal there is to update the the development code so that it's consistent with the comp plan with the housing element that we're going to draft and encouraging diversity of housing types and what that will do is all it kind of simultaneous simultaneously um, meet the goals of house bill 2001 so um, our Community Advisory Committee and the community that we talked to had identified one of their, one of the top priorities is this diversity of housing types and which falls in line with what House Bill 2001 uh, asked for. Um, so the timeline for the development code update is, uh, well, first um, we, re we requested a grant from DLCD. We, we express interest. <laughs> they asked for communities to express interest in um, who might request a grant. So we expressed interest and basically were invited to apply for a grant, which is um, due at the end of this week. And then we will um, know if we receive that technical assistance in November. And the type of technical assistance that we requested is basically um, a consultant will be assigned to us through DLCD. Um, so rather than kind of receiving the money and then doing an RFP and selecting a consultant, um, they have um, similar to us where they've got, you know, a number of consultants on their qualified pool and um, we'll work with them and they basically assign a consultant to us. We felt really comfortable with that because the consultants that we would hope to hire would be probably the same group of folks. Um, so we'll know about that in November. 
And from there, we'll have our team kickoff um, in early 2021 and then start doing some public outreach in the summer around the development code and then code adoption needs to be completed by June of 2022. And that is um, state uh, guidelines as well. So not just our own aspirations, which I think is completely doable, um, but also what we need to do to comply with House Bill 2001. Um, so then we had originally put in some high level thoughts around community engagement and what that looks like. Um, we definitely are gonna look for ways to involve the community. Um, we'll continue to bring updates to the planning commission and city council. And of course, establish a, a web presence. Our initial idea, uh, what, what worked really well for us last year was to go to where the people are. So that's one of the pieces that, that we need to talk about and, and think about. Um, last summer, we spent time on the commons during some concerts and um, along with some of our other uh, departments in, in outreach and we got some great engagement that way. Um, so we'll, we'll talk through what that looks like and talk through that maybe with our, the communications team um, and just how we, how we can go to where people are. That really is truly the best way to get engagement. Um, it, it, it gets to a group of people who wouldn't normally come to, you know, a, a real traditional open house or we don't, really have thoughts about housing but hey if they're there and we're there and they actually have some thoughts they want to give us they'll stop and do that so that's what we need to identify um, and then we definitely want to continue our commitment to diversity equity and inclusion um, we spend a lot of energy making sure we had documents translated and available um, in, in just accessible ways and so we'll continue that um, so I think our last slide just kind of encapsulated some of those timelines. We'll, we'll bring an update to you. At this point, our, our goal was to bring a, a check-in with you in July of this year. And that still seems reasonable to me. Um, if not July, it might be later this summer. Um, and so I will, I'll pause there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Question. Raise your hand in your camera if you have a question. Valerie. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. I guess my question is, and, and excuse me if I'm not getting this correct, but that some of the, um, when we were talking about a diversity of housing types, um, right now in our development code, I think there's certain types we don't have, like maybe the cottage style homes and Mm -hmm. Some of those. So at what point do those get added in the development code and what's the process to do that? Right, um, good. So that gets added to the development code when we go through and do the development code update. So if we start that, um, what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that will be somewhere between like fall of 2021 and that adoption period of June of 2022. And the, essentially what that looks like is a, a, a typical process of a plan text amendment. Um, so where it really needs to get reflected though is in the comp plan update. So when we're talking about the comprehensive plan and diversity of housing types, we'll have some more kind of looser language that will say, you know, the community desires to see diversity of housing types, including such things as cottage cluster. So then when we go in and put it into the regulations of what's allowed, it'll reflect that language. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Paul. Yeah, thanks, um, Aquila. That was um, very, um, concise. My question is usually, as you said, you would go to where the people are and that would be something we'd be doing all the spring and for the part of the summer to reach a timetable that if I'm not mistaken was set up um, 
not necessarily last year, but in the last legislative, um, I mean, is what is causing us to be acquired. What's the possibility and how would it affect your outreach if they extended the deadline from 2022 to 2023 because of um, the fact that it's really hard right now to, to do um, public outreach. And my, my concern is that you're gonna try to then squeeze next summer into, or this summer and next summer into just next spring. And I'm not sure if that's something that's, that's fair or, or equitable, if, if that makes sense. It does. Um, I haven't heard of any extensions of the deadline um, at this point. I don't know if that's going to change. Um, I think, let's see if I can get this right. And I might have to phone a friend with Sean here on the line, but um, I think that was put into, that is not one of the types of requirements that the governor can actually waive. Um, so there's, there's some specific words that I'm losing right now, but it, because it's adopted into the ORS, um, I, I don't think that that can just be waived. And so the only way that the timeline could be extended is if you know, there's some special legislation or legislation, which I suppose could happen next year in the regular session to extend that. So right now I haven't, heard of that. I haven't heard of any talks around extending that deadline yet. Um. So I, my follow up question then, and I don't think I saw it. Can you send me then the, the specific code, state code? And because then I, I think what we probably need, to, what I'd like to do at least is, uh, and, and Mayor, maybe you can also bring this up at the next mayor's meeting. Um, with some of the other cities and see if, I mean, maybe there's nothing to be concerned about. Maybe this is just a slam dunk and it's a, a no brainer, but it just, on the surface, it doesn't seem that way to me. And so then my, my question is, do we need to start reaching out to the legislature, you know, to, to Fusak and Wagner in our district and other mayors reaching out to their elected reps about the possibility of this might be something that needs to be extended um, because of the, the time collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I I can track that down and send it to you. Because the different it depends the duty of your code adoption depends on the size of your city. So not all cities in the state of Oregon are in the same timeline. We're grouped with the larger cities, so the larger cities are in this timeline of meeting this date. The may the mayors and have been asking over and over about the 120 day shot clock and the governor has not budged on that. Um, and neither has the legislature about 120 days still for land use hearings. So I don't know how amenable they be with this. I guess they'll come down to when we get closer and closer, like you're saying, Paul, that someone looks at it and throws the flag saying we're not gonna be able to, be able to make it because we lost you know, six, seven months due to COVID in this process. But it's, with land use stuff, it sounds that it has appeared that they're not very flexible <laughs> well and so then i guess my question is am i am i over analyzing this aquila is this something that uh, i mean and i mentioned this to uh charlene in my my call with her la uh, last week we did i think the city did an amazing outreach for the 2040 plan i mean and that was accumulated by that that last meeting um that i think it was a luncheon if i'm not mistaken that was really well attended and by a very diverse group and so in my, and so I just want to make sure if we're overthinking it, that's fine. If we're not, then my question is, do, do we need to, you know, start sending feelers out and talking to everybody, you know, to everybody, and that'd be to all counselors talking to everybody, if we think it's going to be an issue, or is this just something that it's not necessarily going to be a problem because we've already done most of the legwork? Well, my, I guess my opinion on that is with the comprehensive plan update, I think that's a little bit easier because that's really based on a lot of the outreach that we've already done. Um, so I, I think if, if we can find some ways to check back in with the community, um, I think for that timeline, we're okay. For the development code timeline, 
I don't know how we can plan that far in advance, honestly. Um, so the the meeting that you the luncheon that you referred to is is another basically piece of legislation that we have to continue to do. Um, it doesn't have to be in September or we had last year we had it in mid to late September. Basically just needs to be done sometime this year. We have to report on it before February of next year. Um, so that can move around. And I'm just not sure how we, you know, plan for next summer at this point. I think for the development code, if we rely on um, being able to go to public events next summer, I think we're okay with that timeline at this point in time. And um, when it comes to, and I'm, I'm going to say that, you know, for today, <laughs> April 27th, 2020. And I think when the legis legislature meets again for their regular session, we'll have a much better idea at that point if we need to push on deadlines. Now, I say that knowing that usually people get start getting their lobbying going before that, right, before the legislature starts. So, you know, perhaps it's this fall that we just kind of re, uh, reorient, take another look. Let's see if that's if that's doable. Um, but I I appreciate I appreciate you pointing that out. I think it is a valid concern to think about. Other questions? Robert. Robert then Nancy. <laughs> Thanks. A uh, couple of questions uh, on the DLCD grant. Um, we've applied or we're going to apply soon. Do you know if the funding for that's already been allocated or is that subject to the next budget cycle? No, I believe it's already been allocated. Okay, and then we've locally, uh, we're gonna budget as if we didn't get the grant, correct? Right. Okay, and then if, is the grant in a dollar amount or is it just, we'll cover the cost, you don't worry about it? Yes, it, so um, that <laughs> it's the we'll cover the cost <laughs> answer okay. that you gave, which is par partially why we wanted to just kind of go with their um, consultant that they were going to pick. Okay, uh, second question. Um, we've talked about the comp plan and how it's gonna be updated a little bit in terms of housing priorities. Um, is there a timetable for further substantive updates to the comp comprehensive plan? Say, for example, um, you know, we wanted to encourage more neighborhood commercial out in the neighborhoods. Um, is that something that we won't be returning to until 2023 and onward? Or is that any of that going to be able to be woven into the current process? So I, I don't foresee us being able to weave that in. I, I think that our uh, capacities will have to really be focused on housing. I think where some of, some of that may come from, well, that specific example that you gave, I think could come from our economic strategic plan and that update and identifying from there what what comprehensive plan updates need to be made to um, realize some of those strategies. Um, but for this particular one, this particular update, it's really go going to be focused on housing. Um, will the next comp plan be in 2023? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it would be that far out or if it's just um, let's focus on the housing, you know, kind of get the ball rolling on the development code, and then we can return to other substantive updates. Yeah, well, I, I, and I ask because I remember as part of 2040, there were a couple of departures, you know, where people wanted to talk about building heights downtown and a couple of other things. And 
at the time, I think we said, we'll just put those in the bullpen uh, and deal with them later. So I just don't want those things to be lost uh, and to have some clarity on, on you know, how we move forward with those things, because I do think they are important, um, albeit within you know, limited capacity. So my third and final question is a couple of times in um, the presentation, it refers to high policy priorities. I didn't find a list of those anywhere. Hmm. Um, and I would like if you could just circulate those around to the people on the council um, oh. so we can take a look at those and um, just confirm. I, I mean, I know we recently did confirm them. I just don't have a list of them in front of me uh, and would like to see those uh, sure. just at your convenience. OK, yeah. Um and those are yes i can i can circulate that with the council and uh for any for any observers it those are listed in a um document that's online on our on our website um just under the i think you could just search for like policy priorities um but yes i will send that document out to you guys okay. nancy thank you hi guys um, I had a question that went along a little bit with Paul's question about the community outreach. Um, I know we've, it look, we have a great listing of like community groups, the CIOs and the advisory committees and diversity and aging task force. And that's great. And I, I like that we're using all of our available avenues, but I have a question too about it, either talking to or going out to meet with or soliciting input from some of the communities and or the actual developers that are creating the kind of developments in other communities that we might like to emulate. Um, okay. You know, like great mixed use, multi-age, um, aging in place kind of developments and maybe seeing if we could, you know, talk with the planner, the developer of those um, types of communities and developments and see if there might be something that, you know, a little pearl we get from them. We could do something better or smarter or have an amenity that would attract them to our community. Okay. That, yeah, that's a great suggestion. Definitely. Thanks. Other questions? I've just got two. So just going back to your timeline. Um, so you're pretty confident as of today, <laughs> April 27th, <laughs> that this timeline works considering we're still working remotely. We're not quite sure when everyone's gonna get back to work normally. <laughs> um, so do you think this timeline still is valid? I do. Um, I guess what I, what I want our team to think about a little bit more is the public outreach portion of it because we definitely want to make sure that we're um, checking in um, but by thinking about adoption basically a year from now for for the robert and i beat up on you and steve about you know separating our development code and zoning uh and splitting that out and get more of that in the comprehensive plan so is that that is that doesn't sound like that's part of this phase that's the further phase that robert was discussing no that is that is part of this phase that's okay. one of the okay. goals like the, yeah. the medium density low density housing all that stuff in our zoning map the comprehensive plan will take the place of correct with development code i'm i'm sorry i guess i'm not following. so, so like how we have all the different zones in the community and oh. one of the goals Robert and I talked about, you know, yeah. what a really good comprehensive plan is that's all pulled out of there. Mm -hmm. And a comprehensive mm -hmm. plan dictates the kind of um, designs, mm -hmm. goals for an area mm -hmm. versus your zoning map. And I know our long range plan was to get rid of, to have the comprehensive plan replace the zoning. Correct. We talked about this, but that sounds like that's not in this initial phase or it's just a small part of it? So one of the goals was it is to separate the comprehensive plan from the development code. Mm -hmm. And I hear what you're asking is also then, um, and maybe this is what you're getting at, is there gonna be a, a new map created? 
so right. I mean, because you we've got our long stadium, like right now we have you know small density residential housing that it wouldn't be that specific or our zoning map would be very specific on what that the comprehensive plan would describe that versus a zoning map right right so the comprehensive plan is supposed to have these designations right these plant plan designations right and then typically on top of that is a zoning map um so i'm not sure that we could have the zoning map done until we actually do those development code updates okay. so i think i think to to get it <laughs> to piece this apart a little bit is we do want to like basically create two different documents. I like to talk with my hands, so I've got to put them up by the camera a little bit. But anyway, create two different documents. And then when we do the development code, at that point would be the appropriate time to do this new zoning map. Okay. I'm not sure that we could do that ahead of time. I, I mean, I think you know what I mean by ahead of time. Um, but to reflect that, uh, the comprehensive plan updates and to like, kind of fully separate them, we'd have to create that map with the development code updates. I mean, I just, it's one of our goals that we have. And obviously it's not going to happen in the next year or two, but one of the goals is, you know, like you, you mentioned Hillsboro, I think, you know, and Sherwood, how they've done it in Wilsonville on how the comprehensive plan drives development versus uh, the development, you know, the specifics of zones and, this is low density residential. Comprehensive plan is a lot more flexible. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Because we're right at that, that time. Oh, we are already. Wow. All right. Well, thank you, Aquila. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, tonight, uh, just do a little housekeeping. We've got two proclamations. The first proclamation is for National Police Week. Who would like to do that one? Okay, Bridget, I see your hand up. And then we have another proclamation for uh, Public Service Recognition Week. Who would like to read that one? I see Nancy. All right. <laughs> Can't hear you, Nancy. I thought you said you were going to do it, Frank. I'm sorry. Nope, nope. All right, so I've got Bridget and Nancy, and then any questions on the consent agenda tonight? I don't see any. All right. Yeah, let's see. And make sure I got everything covered. And we have no proclamation. All right. Uh, so I'll go ahead and close the work session of April 